Um, I'm going to go ahead and start on the announcements real quick. I want to keep it short and sweet, and we'll go ahead and let people hop on. Um, so real quick, guys, um, you know that I've been hyping up Sean T. like no one's business. He is my jam. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mute one more. Mute audio. Okay. Sorry. He is my jam. So um, newer coaches know that if you have new challengers that come on board and you're not quite comfortable with running a challenge group yet all by yourself, know that you can go ahead and shadow me in one of mine. I am actually going to be launching my group tomorrow just so that I can make sure that I have all of my challengers prepped and ready to go for the 9th, 10th, and 11th. And from there, we're going to go straight into Shanti week. Um, June 19th, we're getting a sneak peek from the shift shop, which I'm super excited about. Mark your calendars. So June 19th, um, Chris Downing is freaking amazing. I got to experience him firsthand whenever I went to Putacana. And guys, I'm telling you, he brings something out in you like nobody's business. And I know Danielle can definitely speak to this because she's in the test group. <laughs> um, but guys, I'm telling you, he's incredible. So definitely, I suggest all of us, we try out that sneak peek. Um, and for newer coaches, I wanted to go ahead and mention this too. To see the latest news from Beachbody, just go to your coach online office and it's right underneath, like on the right hand side and we'll say coach breaking news. And I'll give you a breakdown and really keep you in the loop of like what Beachbody, the changes that we're making weekly, monthly, and all of that fun stuff. Um, okay. And if you guys have any questions, go ahead and put it in the chat box and I'll make sure that I answer it at the end of the call because I don't want to waste any time because I am super excited to introduce our guest speaker, Danielle Whitford. She is a top 200 elite coach in 2017. She was premier in 2016 and she's the founder of Dedicated Nation. Um, she started in January 2014 and she became full time in February of 2015 and she's a market or she's a member of the market council. So those super Saturdays that you guys hear me talk about, she helps run those, which is incredible. Oh, it says my internet connection is unstable. Lovely. Um, so, and she also prides herself, and this is why I love Danielle so much, is because she prides herself in being a hot mess mom boss. Um, and honestly, it makes you so freaking relatable, especially to Team Exist, because most, most of my um, coaches on here, either they're mom of twins, mom of multiples, and honestly, we're all just moms. So, <laughs> we relate to you 100%. Um, but... Danielle, I think I mentioned this to you already, but I have to let them know. Um, I think now I want to say it was almost two years ago. You spoke on my coach's call, Natalie. And I remember when your little girl, Val, came into the living room when you, whenever you were doing the call and she just politely asked you something. And I was like, oh my goodness, like why am I so scared to like host my own team calls? And my excuse before was, well, my coach isn't a mom. She doesn't get it. Like, she doesn't get the interruptions that we can have, the tantrums that get thrown on the floor out of nowhere. Like, she doesn't get that. So whenever your daughter came in and I was like, oh, my goodness, I'm creating all of these crazy-ass excuses in my head on why I can't throw these team calls. And it was honestly the missing piece to my business. So I want to say thank you for being so freaking relatable. And honestly, I'm so excited to hear all about your journey being a Beachbody coach, what got you to worry you're at today and honestly any tricks that you can give us mom bosses so floor's all yours girl oh wow well thank you that was a that was a really nice introduction thanks jessica thanks for having me guys hi it's so funny that you say that though because literally like a minute ago they were just coming up for bedtime with my husband and val was like right here like i don't want to go i don't want to go and i'm like oh my gosh i'm going to give the perfect example of what you're talking about <laughs> Um, yeah, so they very well might come screaming up here. They are totally attached to mama at the hip for bedtime. So if they come interrupt, I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. All right. So, um, something I actually want to ask you guys, because I don't know if this is something you guys can relate to, but, um, do I have any quitters in here? Like anybody that has quit anything before they really tried it, like given up on programs, given up on, you know, opportunities, given up on, I don't know, whatever. Right. Okay. 
So you guys are probably going to relate to my story because I am what I like to call a reformed quitter. Um, I was the person who, if it didn't come easily or if it didn't come right away, I would quit. Um, I was actually that way with all of my jobs. I, I did stick it out through school, amazingly enough, got some degrees and things. But um, when it came to my jobs, I was the person that I would come into a job and expect it to change my life, expect it to be this miraculous thing that will pay all of my bills, that will you know, be really fun to go to every day, and there won't be any drama, and it'll be great, right? Um, and I'd get into it for about five months and I'd be like, oh, this is just like every other corporate job. And then I would start looking for a new job. So I would hold a job for like eight or nine months and I would switch. Like I would just constantly be switching jobs. Right. Um, because I was a chronic quitter. Like I just, I always wanted something better, something different, but I never wanted to stick it out to find that thing. Right. Um, well, Beachbody for me was that missing link was the thing that I was searching for all those years. Right. So it's not even that I was a quitter, it's that I just hadn't found the right thing for me. So let me tell you my story and how I found Beachbody. I do not have a health and fitness background. Let me just, let me just really emphasize that with you guys. Like I was not an athlete. I was like the most unhealthy person for the majority of my life. I love my parents dearly. We have a wonderful relationship. I am very blessed to have loving parents who, you know, adore me and I adore them and it's great, right? But my parents did not set the most healthy examples. My parents were the, I'll work out doing Richard Simmons for a day and then I'll just quit. Okay, so you see where I get this mindset from, right? Um, or do the Atkins for, you know, the, like three weeks and then get it all back plus some, right? We were like the meat and potatoes and canned veggie family. I swear I had not had a fresh leaf of spinach for the first like 20 years of my life. I'm not even joking. Um, so I just have no health and fitness background. I always wanted to, you know, lose weight. I was always the, I don't know how you want to say it, the chubbier kid. The, I was never naturally thin. Like I was the person that, you know, if I ate a slice of pizza, I'd balloon up the next day. Like that's just how it's, how it's always been, right? So I had all these excuses built in my head. We all do. And I would make these um, deals with myself. Okay, well, once I have to shop in the plus size section, I'll do something about it. And then that would come and go and I wouldn't change. Once, you know, I hit 200 pounds, I'll do something about it. Okay, and then that came and went. Um, I kept making those like, you know, <laughs> silly deals in my head. And then I just kept making excuses for why, like to talk myself out of doing something and changing my life, right? Um, and it actually took until I had my, I have two daughters. Um, Lily and Val. And Lily, when Lily was born, that was my turning point. Um, there's a picture I have of me um, in those lovely, you know, hospital gowns. You guys are moms, you feel me. Like, that's just, you know, you're like the size of a whale, regardless of how healthy you are. And you're in this hospital gown on the bed, right? Like the most attractive moment of our lives. Um, and you know, what's funny is that it wasn't the pregnancy that I saw in that picture. It was what I had done to myself prior to that. I believe that pregnancy is a beautiful thing. I am someone who I probably give way more slack to my pregnant mamas than I, I do to anybody else because I know how tough it is. Like we know firsthand how tough it is to be pregnant, how much of them, I swear sometimes I, I try to stop myself right there because I know you guys might have little ones around. So if I swear, I'm really sorry. Um, but you know, it's kind of screws with your mind, right? Um, but when I see that picture, it has nothing to do with pregnancy. It has to do with the person I was before I got pregnant. Because that was a long time coming. I didn't gain all my weight in pregnancy. It was many years of, of bad eating and no activity before that, right? So I was near about 300 pounds when I had Lily. And I see that picture and I, I call it my job at a hut picture because I, I have no neck. Like I just, I, I can't, I have no form to myself. Um, and it was a wake up call in that, I needed to change. Like my life was no longer about me. It was about this, this little person I just brought into the world, this, this beautiful little girl. Right. I know. And, and I was no longer just living for myself. No offense to my husband. Of course I was living for him a little bit too, but it took having Lily to wake me up to, I have to do something. And so I, I am from a small town in, in uh, Wisconsin, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Um, I did the only things I knew of, which were Weight Watchers, and a gym membership, the only gym we had in town, which was Anytime Fitness. I don't know if you guys have that near you or anything. But anyway, so I signed a two-year contract for this fitness membership. And I was paying for, okay, just to give you guys a little, just a little side note, people that complain about how much money a, a challenge pack is need to do their research. Because Weight Watchers, when I signed up, was $45 a month, a month. And 
the gym membership I signed up for was, I think it was $65 a month plus $300 a week for three sessions with a personal trainer, three half hour sessions. Like I was paying like $400 a month for this outside of like my groceries. Like that didn't include anything extra. Um, so I did that because that's all we had. I didn't know anything about anything else. I knew nothing. So that's what I did. So when you're worried about sharing about this, about beach body and what we have to offer, don't be, because there are people like me out there who have no blooming clue what they're doing. Okay. Uh, so that's what I did. I started there. I, I lost some weight. I lost the pre-pregnancy weight. And then, um, I plateaued hardcore, like really plateaued. Um, and I, I attribute that to the fact that I wasn't doing it the right way. I started, stopped working out as much because I was paying dollars to see a trainer I wasn't even seeing because I was a, a working mom. Okay. So I would go to work. I, at the time I was commuting an hour one way. So that was a 10 hour day and that was on a good day. So that's on a day when, you know, I got done on time and got home. There was no traffic. So it's hour day. Um, I was breastfeeding my daughter. Uh, so I was still getting up in the middle of the night. So little by little, I just stopped going to the gym because I didn't want to take time away from my daughter to go. And by the time she was in bed, I did not want to drag my butt out of bed, out of my house to go to the gym, right? So paying for all these things, not get anywhere. In the meantime, something else I want to share with you guys in conjunction with this about my career, um, aside from being a chronic quitter, I also was someone who swore before I had a baby that I was never going to be a stay-at-home mom. It wasn't for me. I was going for my MBA. I wanted to work. I wanted to, I actually wanted to be the CEO of like a fortune 500 company. Like that was my vision was I want to do that. But the thing I didn't like factor into that equation was all the time I want to spend with my family. You know, when you become a CEO of that kind of company where you're not totally in control and you have to answer to a board there, your life is no longer your own. Like you have to work for that. Um, so I swore up and down I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to stay home with my kids. I didn't want to stay home with my kids. Lily came into this world and completely changed my mind. You guys, I'm sure you guys can relate to that on some level with your kids that you think you have parenting. You know what it's going to be like. You know how it's going to be. You know how you're going to be. And they come and it's like, oh, no, they watch TV. Oh, no, they have chicken nuggets. Like, I mean, really, let's be honest, guys. Um, so I, it, like, it was like a, a switch flipped in that moment. Like, she was here and I was like, shit. I was like, I have set my life up so that I have to work. Like I was making twice the amount of money my husband was making. There was no possible way that I could stay home with her. So this is all happening kind of around the same time, right? I found this passion for changing my life. Um, I was really stuck. Um, I wanted a career where I could be home with her, which let's face it, when you Google that, you don't really get a whole lot of like reputable sources, right? Where I could make a decent amount of income working from home. So, um, let's see here. Fast forward a bit. I had got connected to my, my coach, my upline, Elizabeth Hartke and through a mutual friend. And, um, cause I was looking into Shakeology. I was like, I'm looking for something else, something to get me off my plateau, something to change this up. And Beachbody really intrigued me because they have the fitness programs that I could do at home. And they have this nutritional drink that's, you know, there's no artificial crap in it. You know, I'd been following Beachbody a little bit along the way. I, I'd followed all these fitness pages and things just to like surround myself with inspiration. I was like my own virtual challenge group because I just wanted to like be surrounded by people who like understood what I was going through. So I got connected to my coach. I was the customer everyone hates. I was the one who she sent me a link and then I fell off the face of the planet. Um, I would tell her I'm going to do it and then I wouldn't do it because I kept making excuses. I kept telling myself, I don't need to do this. I don't need to spend the money. I can do it on my own. And then thing changed. Surprise, surprise. Right. So I finally, T25 came out July, 2013. I was like, okay, 25 minutes a day. I can do that. All right. All right. All right. I'll do it. So I signed up. I actually signed up as a coach right away, July, 2013. Um, but what I say is I signed up as a hobby coach because I didn't really believe in the opportunity at that point. I didn't believe that it could change my life. I didn't believe, I thought it was just another scheme, another thing, something that would just take my money and my time and I won't see any re reward from it, right? Because again, I wanted immediate results. I wanted it to happen now and I wanted it to happen with no effort. I wanted it just to happen, um, which we all know that's not how this works, right? That's not how anything works. But T25, Shakeology, four weeks of that and I was off my plateau. I hit my 50 pound weight loss goal that I had been struggling to hit for like nine months. I was so excited. At the end of T25, I found out I was pregnant with Valerie. Woohoo! Right? Kind of? Yeah. Okay. Weird timing, right? So I found out I was pregnant with Valerie, and I 
just kind of shut down. I was kind of like, well, I obviously can't coach. I've been toying around with the idea. In fact, I think my first month I hit success club and then I didn't do anything after that because I think I signed up my husband and my mom and my best friend or something like that. And I didn't actually put any work into it. So of course I didn't hit success club after that. And I kind of crawled into a hole like, well, I'm obviously not cut out for this when I wasn't doing the actions. So I had already kind of checked out. I was like, well, obviously I can't do this while I'm pregnant. At that time, those of you that are in team drop the cookie, I don't know if, if you guys are in there, but my uplines group, I, I was the only mom at that time. There were no other moms. I didn't know of any other moms in Beachbody at that time. Um, so I was like, I had no one to model after. I had no concept of how I could do this while pregnant, right? So I actually submitted my cancellation form in November of 2013. Liz reached out to me and was like, hey, what's going on? I was like, oh, well, I just found out I'm pregnant. Um, you know, I can't really coach, obviously. And Liz, being the amazing mentor that she is, um, had the insight, the foresight to say, you know, I totally support you. I obviously don't know what you're going through, but I want you to know that you obviously don't understand the potential. Like, you don't see what this can do for your life. I see big things for you. I know this could change your life. But, you know, whatever you need to do is fine. And whatever it was she said in that moment made me withdraw my cancellation form. So I called, I called corporate. I was like, okay, just kidding. I don't want to cancel. Um, but I still didn't do anything, guys. I still didn't. I just sat there. I was the lurker in the team page. I just sat there, kind of like watched everybody do these cool things, right? Um, so fast forward a little bit, a couple months, January. I was working this job. I was, I'm a, I was a metal buyer for an automotive company. It's a pretty cush corporate job. Um, but okay. So this is, this is a scenario. Um, Keith Callahan always says it's either inspiration or desperation that makes you make a change. Right. I was already inspired, but I wasn't desperate. Like that was the thing for me. It's, I have to be desperate to make a change. If you, as you guys have witnessed throughout my story. Right. So the desperation for me came January of that year. Like I said, I'm from Wisconsin. It's really cold here, guys. Like really cold in January. Um, like negative 30 degree wind chill or so. Um, so my daughter's daycare was closed. She's in daycare full time because I work full time. In fact, I knew the day before the weather was so bad. I knew the day before that it was going to be closed. So I told my boss, okay, I'm going to work from home tomorrow. Her daycare is closed. I brought my laptop home. I brought my cell phone. I worked that day from home. It was actually amazing. I sat from the fireplace and I, I kicked ass at my job. I kicked ass at mommy. It was like one of those unicorn days of like, oh my gosh, like this is amazing. Why can't this be every day? I, I killed it. And I went to work the next day and I got reprimanded for missing work, even though I did my job, even though everything was fine and nothing exploded, I got reprimanded. And I remember, I made, it might have been a little bit the pregnancy hormones, but I remember like crying and I was so angry and I went back to my office and I was like, what is this? Like, how is this my life? How is this what I'm looking forward to? I'm just looking at my belly and I'm like, I'm going to have another one. Like, it's not going to get easier, you know, like they're going to get sick. I had two sick days a year, two, two sick days between myself and my two kids. Um. So it was, it was definitely one of those like aha moments of like, I, I have to do something. Something has to change. I prayed. I, I screamed. I got mad. And then I kind of shut down again. I was just like, well, shit, this is my life. I have to deal with it. And I went on Facebook because that's what you do when you're upset, right? You just mindlessly scroll Facebook. And in that moment, I was scrolling Facebook and I'm not even joking, guys. Every post I saw was from the coaches on our team was from Liz, it was from Colleen, from Annalisa Hurley, like all these people that had signed up around the same time as me, I saw all these posts of these guys being, they're happy, they're excited, they're doing something they're passionate about, and they're successful. And it was like this, oh, like, you know, like the skies part and like angels start singing moment for me, where I was like, it's literally staring me in the face. It's right here. And in that moment, I sent Liz a message. I was like, I'm all in. I'm like, I don't know what that means. I don't even know what I have to do but you can tell me and I'll do it. Like, let's do this. And that was my turning point. Like I, from there, I have not looked back. I've done everything she's asked. She told me to do in that moment. Like everything that she, all the advice she gave me, I took it and I ran with it. It was so uncomfortable. Like, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like when you jump in like that, it is uncomfortable putting yourself all out there on social media, talking to people you don't know, like that stuff's uncomfortable. I get it. It is. It totally is. I'm not going to demean that at all, but I did it anyway. Being uncomfortable, it, it, it's just your body's way of trying to protect itself. 
when you get that feeling, you know, like that, like, oh, I don't really want to. I don't, that's scary. It's your body saying, like, you could get hurt. You could get made fun of. Like, it's trying to protect you, okay? But that doesn't mean it's right, okay? So you have to push past that and get uncomfortable and do it anyway. So I went all in in that moment. I set a goal with Liz that day. I said, one year. One year from now, I want to be home with my kids. I want to replace my income and be home. And I missed it by about two weeks. Two weeks after that date, I was home with my kids, February 9th, 2015. I've been home ever since. Um, and I want to emphasize with you guys, like, that was a big deal. Like, me replacing my income, that corporate income, was a big deal. That was not an easy thing. It was a big, big deal. And something I never, ever would have been able to do without Beachbody. Never. Like, it, it, with, aside from winning the lottery, which I don't play. So, would never have been possible, Okay. This opportunity can be whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be a little side income where you pay for your Shakeology, that's fine. If you want to blow this shit up and, and make it something big for you and your family, you can do that too. It's up to you. Jessica's not responsible for determining your future in, the, in Beachbody, okay? You are. The fact that you have an incredible upline is a big perk and you should definitely thank your lucky stars that you have that, okay? Because there are a lot of people in this, in this company that don't have that. So you guys are super blessed. Um, okay, so I'm gonna share some little tips with you guys in terms of mom bossing and how I manage it. Because I'll tell you something, <laughs> this little side note here, you guys. Being a stay mom, work from home mom, being a mom at all is the hardest job in the entire world. It is. It is the most rewarding and wonderful job, but it is the hardest job, okay? I had these grand illusions when I quit my job that it, they were going to be these perfect days and I was going to be the happiest, one most wonderful mom, and trust me, it is not like that. <laughs> I yell more than I don't, and it's, that's life. That's, that's being a mom. It is, okay? Um, so first, I want you guys to own that. All right, own that, that being a mom is messy, that being a parent is messy, that kids are messy, that life is messy. That's, that's a part of this, whether you're a coach or not. I have so many moms on my team that like to try to blame coaching for why their life is messy. And I said, no, it's actually going to be that way whether you coach or not. Coaching gives you your sanity. That's how I feel, is that this is my escape from my kids sometimes. It's like, this is my me time. I get to see adults and talk about adult things. This is great. But you need to own the fact that momming is messy, separate from coaching, okay? This is your escape. This is something for you. This is a good thing. You're not hurting your kids by ignoring them to be on this call. You are setting a good example for them. You're showing them what a good work ethic is, okay? It's a good thing. Your kids need to know how to work. They need to know how to do these things, okay? If they want to have a job or run their own business, they're going to say, I know how to do that because I watched my mom do it. Um, so it's a good thing, all right? So embrace that. In terms of tips for mom bossing, um, the more planning ahead you can do, the better. So if you guys are like me, like I have, I have two young kids. I have Lily, who's five, and I have Valerie, who's two and a half, almost three. Um, and I do, let's see, Lily was three, and Valerie was not even one. Um, so if you have young kids, life is crazy. Like, it is like beyond crazy. It's nuts. Every day is different, right? Um, so the more you can do ahead, the better. I live for my scheduling websites. Like I live for Postcron and Buffer. Like those websites like save my life. I schedule all of my challenge group posts, all of them, except for my sweaty selfie and my like Shakeology selfie or like random thoughts. I schedule my posts. Um, when I was working full time and trying to balance all of that, I actually scheduled my personal posts as well because my job was such that I just wasn't able to be on Facebook at the times that I had traction on Facebook. So I would schedule my morning posts, which would post about the time that I would get to work, like seven, eight o'clock. I would also schedule posts to post around noon. Um, and then my evening posts, I usually did, um, real time. So that is a huge savior. Like, if you guys don't use that, you need to. It will save your sanity. Anything that you can duplicate, any duplicatable systems you can implement, do it. Like, if you, like, like, it, like your coach sneak peeks, make those something that is the same every time so that you don't have to think about it. You know, make your coach trainings the same every time. The structure, at least. I mean, if you do, like, I do live videos in my, in my new coach training. So, like, you know, I, obviously the content will change a little bit and I have to show up, but I have my outline. It does not mean every, okay? The more you can make those things standardized, the better. 
you have to live and breathe by your power hour, you guys. Like, and, and when I say that, as a mom, if you're staying home with your kids, the power hour to me becomes less of a power hour and more of power numbers. I don't work based on how much time I'm putting in. I work based on what my numbers are. So like I have to talk to this many prospects every day. I have to talk to this many of my challengers. I have to talk to this many of my coaches and I have to send this many invites and add this many people to my network. I don't do the hour thing because sometimes it takes me all day to get through it because big interruptions. So if your life is like that, don't do a power, don't expect to find an hour in your day. Like don't, don't give yourself that expectation because you're basically setting yourself up to be disappointed. Instead of doing that, set numbers because then, okay, the kids are playing nicely and being quiet. I'm going to send five messages or I'm going to send as many messages as I can until they come and grab me. Um, cause I don't know about your, your kids, but like for me, it's like, it's a crapshoot. They could be playing together one minute and then destroying each other the next, or they could sit really nicely for an hour or playing together. Like it's kind of, it depends, right? So instead of trying to plan for the time, plan for what you want to accomplish and be realistic with yourselves. Okay. Um, one of my favorite things to, to teach my coaches is a concept of when you, before your head hits the pillow at night, you need to ask yourself, did I win the day? Now, when I say that, I don't mean, did you do everything on your to-do list? Because that is not, that's, that's never going to happen. Let's be honest. We're business owners. There's always things we can be doing, right? What you need to ask yourself is, did I do the things I need to do to move my business forward? And that's going to be vital behaviors, you guys. Don't overcomplicate it. It is, did you do your workout? Did you drink your Shakeology? Did you post on social media? Did you do some semblance of your power hour? Like, did you accomplish whatever that goal is for yourself? Because everyone's is different. I'm sure my numbers are different than Jessica's. They're different than everyone else on this call. Like, because our goals are different, right? So whatever threshold you set for yourself in terms of my minimum power hour, did you do that? If you, and did you do your personal development? Did you do those things? If you did those things, you can end the day and say, I moved my business forward and I won the day and you can go to bed, right? But don't set these, moms are really good at setting these insanely high expectations of ourselves. And I know there's a lot of coaches on my team who set these really vague expectations of themselves. And it's, again, basically setting yourself up for failure. So much of this business is mindset. So much of it is, where your head is at and how your attitude is and how you feel about things. It's that, that part is huge. Like I need to emphasize that I was not a believer in that before, just for the record. I was the biggest skeptic. I did not believe in self-help. I did not believe in, in the power of the mindset. I thought that was a bunch of whatever, like, I don't know, some swear word, I'm sure. But no, like I didn't believe in that. Um, I am the biggest believer in it now because I have seen the effects it's had in my business and on me. So we need to stop with the vague expectations of ourselves. You need to set actual numbers to things, even if it scares the bejesus out of you. Like you have to set numbers, have to set dates, you know, have to have game plans for what you want to accomplish. You can't just randomly say, I want to be five star at the end of the year and not have a game plan and not be working from numbers every day. Like you can't, you can't do that to yourself. You have to give yourself something to shoot for something to gauge what you're doing. Okay. Um, just like you wouldn't, you know, if Jessica asks, um, what's your success club goal for this month? You wouldn't say, nah, I don't know. Like you, you have a number, right? Like that, you know, to have a number, right? Well, that everything else in your business should be like that too. You should know how many people you should be talking to every day. You should know how many people you should be adding to your network every day. Like you should have goals for those things. Get out of those vague expectations. Okay. Um, define everything. I guess that's what I want to say. Um, I'm going to my notes now because I'm losing my train of thought because it's past my bedtime, if you can believe that. I'm an early bed person. Sorry about it. I usually fall asleep with my kids. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I am not the night owl. My brain does not work past like 9 p.m. I, would, I, I hate getting up early, but like my brain works so much better early in the morning, if that makes sense. Anyway. Um, okay. So a quote that I love that I just want to share with you guys is, no path to greatness has ever involved settling for less than what you really want. Um, and I think that that I feel like that's so appropriate for moms because how often do we settle for something less than we want because we're the moms, because we you know, need to sacrifice for our kids or we need to sacrifice for our husbands or for our house or for, or for everything else. Right? So, you know, if you want to be great in this business, which I'm sure all of you on some level do, or you wouldn't be on this call. Um, you have to go for it. Like you can't settle. You can't, Decide that it's okay that you didn't hit success club or that it's okay that you didn't hit your goal. Look at that and say, you know what? That makes me mad. Like that makes me mad that I didn't do that. So I'm going to fix it now. Like I'm going to go forward and I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen again. 
Okay. It's a decision. Success in this business is a decision like anything else. You know, I'm sitting here as a mom and I, I relatively successful in this business. I mean, I've had my failures. Don't get me wrong. I have had my fair share of failures like anyone else. But the only reason I saw success was because I didn't give up on it. When Liz told me that part of the key to me quitting my job was hitting Success Club every month, even when I didn't really know what that meant, I was like, okay, I'll do it. Like I decided in that moment, that's what I would do. And every month after that point, I've been in Success Club every single month since I started, February 2014, however many months that's been, um, every single month. It's a decision. It is owning your business, guys. You're not just a mom anymore. You are a CEO. Act like Jessica should not have to hunt you down if you're going to lose rank. Like you should know that. And you should make the sacrifices to make sure that doesn't happen because you own your business. If you're sitting here not at Success Club and you want to be at Success Club on the 5th, it's not her decision or her responsibility to hunt you down. It's yours. Own that. Like take pride in that. Like that's something that I did from the very beginning was I took pride in my business. I took pride in not losing rank. Like that was something that, that made me happy and made me feel successful. You have to find the pockets of wins in this, just like parenting, right? So you might have a total shit day where the kids are screaming at each other and, you know, screaming at you and destroying your entire house and things going right. You know, you burn your dinner, whatever, but you have to find the wins anyway. Like when you're laying in bed with them at night and you're snuggling them to sleep, like that's a win. When they look at you and say, I love you, mama. Like that's a win. Like you have to celebrate the wins in your business. Cause there's going to be a lot of shit that happens. There's going to be a lot of garbage that happens. Like, let's be honest. Coaches are going to quit. Challengers are going to give up on themselves. Things are going to happen. People are going to say no. Like those things are all going to happen. You have to find your wins anyway. Okay. Because those wins make all of that garbage worth it. Um, I tell my coaches all the time that, you know, when I get the one yes, the one person who's going to commit and change their life, it makes all, the hundred no's totally worth it. It doesn't even matter. I don't even think about it because when that person sees success, it fills my cup. Like it makes me so happy that nothing else matters. So you have to celebrate that guys, ignore the negative. It's just, it's just going to, it's just going to eat away at you. Okay. So, so do your best to just brush it off, lesson release. And focus on why you're here. Every no gets you closer to a yes. Turn everything into a positive, okay? All right, so I'm going to share. I don't know if I can find my, oh, no, I moved it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Hot mess, told you. All right, my keys to success. I have 10 that I share on every call. These are not rocket science. You guys probably don't even need to write these down. I mean, you can, feel free. But these are very common sense, and I'm sure you've heard them from Jessica before. They are very common sense. But this, to me, is the route to success. This is, this is what got me to where I am. So if you want to be here or you want to be doing awesome things, this is it. Okay. Number one, success club is a non-negotiable. It's non-negotiable. It's not, it's not a, are you going to hit success club this month? It's a, what level of success club are you going to hit? How many people are you going to help? It's a given. Okay. It's funny because even if I'm sitting at the end of the month and I'm not at success club, I'm not even worried about it because I know that I'm going to do it. Like I know that I'm going to make it happen. And part of that, I've been doing this for three and a half years. Like I trust the process. I believe, I know that I can do it. I know that I'll find the people. Okay. But you have to set that mindset with yourself. All of this is mindset. You have to set that for yourself and say, I will hit success club. I will. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's happening. Non-negotiable key. Power hour every damn day. I already covered that with you guys. Um, again, doesn't have to be an hour. Um, but it can be. And I want to share something with you guys. This is, this is an experiment I did with my team. We did this action push group we did earlier this year. And it was something I wanted to look, because my, my team was complaining about the level I wanted them to reach in this group. It was a push group. Like that was the point was them to push outside their comfort zone and do more. And I think I had them talking to like 25 people a day or something like that. I did an experiment with myself on my power hour. So what I did is I used my timer because like I said, the kids interrupt. So I can't count the time that they're interrupting me. That's not me doing my job. Right? So I did the timer for all of these things that I did in an hour and 15 minutes. I talked to like 138 people. So you can do a lot in an hour. All right. Like granted some of that's experience. So even taking the experience out of it, if you're a brand new coach, like talking to 20 people a day should be no thing. Like it should be, Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, like let's do this, okay? 
decide, just do it. Okay. I know it's uncomfortable to invite when you've never invited before. I was uncomfortable too. I still have moments where I get uncomfortable, but guess what? Again, the uncomfortable is just your body's protection. It's nothing. It's nothing is think about worst case scenario. You invite someone. What is the worst case scenario? The worst case is that they tell you to F off and they block you. That is the worst case. Does that really have any bearing on your life? Aside from having to read that they told you to F off, like, does it really affect your life? One of my favorite things to say to people is that other people's opinions don't pay my bills. Like, they don't have to wake up and be me every day. Like, the people that criticize what I did, I had a family member on Facebook, and I'm pretty sure, and I, I'm super close to all of my extended family. Unfriend me on Facebook, and I'm pretty sure it's because of Beachbody. He never really owned up to it, but I'm pretty sure it is. And it hurt me for a while. It was like a total turning point for me. Like, like, wow, like, why would he do that? Like, I'm so, I'm so hurt. Why would he, why wouldn't he be happy for me? Like, it was like a really big deal to me. And I, I had this epiphany and I was like, you know what? His opinion, if I stopped doing what I'm doing because he didn't like it, I wouldn't be home with my kids. Like, he doesn't have to live the life that I hate. I do. So if I don't want to hate my life, I'm the one that has to change it, Right. Um, anyway, so do your power hour. Don't make excuses. Just do it. Um, number three is have a crystal clear vision, a crystal clear fire inside of you for why you're doing this. I don't, you know, people say why that makes you cry. It doesn't even have to be that, but it could be just something that lights your soul on fire. Like what gets you excited about this business? Everyone's going to be different for me. Yeah. It was being home with my kids. That was my, like, you know what? I don't give a damn what I want to do right now. Cause that's what I want more than anything. So I was laying in bed six and a half months pregnant, putting Lily to bed, exhausted, dead tired, having to get up at, you know, five or six the next morning to go to work again. I would still drag my very pregnant butt out of bed and go down and do my power hour and send a ton more messages because I knew that over getting an extra hour of sleep was going to get me where I wanted to go. And where I wanted to go was so much more important to me than that hour of sleep. It has, whatever it is for you has to be worth it. it has to be worth the sacrifice. So you have to decide what that is. Um, and I'm sure Jessica, I'd be happy to, you know, brainstorm with you and, and talk with you about it based on your life and what you want and trans translate that into something that Beachbody can do for you. Um, another thing that I discovered along the way, so I, I'm home with my kids already and I had to like expand my vision because that was the vision for so long. Right. And so I'm home and I'm like, well, now it's my vision. Like I've done it. Like what now? And it actually became something to do with my husband. Like he has such passion for creative things and, and was working a job that didn't use him at all. Um, and that became my passion and was, was I wanted to bring him home so that he could pursue what he wants to do. And now we're doing that. Like, so, so pick something that just sets your soul on fire, like gets you makes you don't, don't want to sleep. Do you guys ever have those days where it's like you're t sending tons of messages and you're having so much fun talking to people, you just don't want to put your phone down. Like I've done that where I'm like laying in bed. I should be in bed. I should be sleeping. I'm exhausted, but I'm sitting there typing and my husband's yelling at me to put my phone down, but I can't stop because I'm so just on fire and so excited. That's the point you want to get to in this business is where you just don't want to stop because you're so excited about it. All right. Number four, I've touched on this too, is set goals every day, every week, month, and year. You should have goals for everything. Okay. Your daily goals are going to be like your power hour, your special, like what you want to accomplish in the day, right? How many people you want to help today? How many people want to help this week, this month, this year? I set those goals, break them down. I do that with my coaches on ones. We'll set your yearly goal. We'll break it down into quarters. We'll break it down into months. And then we'll break it down into what should you do this week? Like, like how can you get closer to that goal? Um, because, and something else that goes along with, with goal setting is you want to set goals, but you want to learn how to bounce back. You want to close that gap in bouncing back. Your goal. Okay. Cause I'll miss goals. I've had plenty of goals that I've missed, but you don't want to spend a lot of time. I always tell my coaches like, don't you get, you get about an hour to weep about it. You get an hour to be upset, to punch things, to curse each body, to curse yourself, to curse your coaches, to curse whatever. Like you get to be mad about it. Cause we got to feel our feelings. Right. I always tell my kids that you get to feel your feelings. Like you get to be upset but you got to get over it, right? You got to move on with your life and you got to trans, you got to transfer that energy into something positive, which is going to be going after that goal. Again, it's going to be restructuring and refocusing, right? All right. Number five, become an expert storyteller. Who are you? 
And I think that that's important for new coaches to think about is that, you know, who are you? Like, don't just show me a Shakeology selfie and say, yum. Like that doesn't tell me anything. I want to know why you're drinking it. I want to know why it's important. Why should I stop my day to pay attention to what you're telling me on social media? Why? Like, give me a reason. Um, I want to know who you are. Get vulnerable. Share the real you. Um, when I started sharing really who I am, the messy, the mom boss, the swearing, the whatever, like the real person that I am, I actually started attracting people who are like me, who totally get me, who are fun to work with. So sharing who you are, yeah, it may turn some people off, but you don't want those people anyway. You want the people who get you because that's where it gets fun. Uh, number six, personal development. It should be number one. I don't know why it's number six on my list. Personal development, your mind is key, guys. Events. If you're not going to summit, you better have a damn good reason why, okay? Summit is huge. The only reason I didn't go to my first summit was because I was literally nine months pregnant. Like, literally going to pop in two weeks, like, months pregnant. Got it? And had it been closer to where I lived, I would have made my husband drive me. I was that upset that I was missing it, okay? The only fact I didn't go was because they wouldn't have let me on the plane. <laughs> So you have to have a real good reason for why you're not going. And your kids not having a babysitter, sorry guys, is not a good enough reason. Like, it's not. Like, find someone to watch your kids. Make your husband. Do something. Like, make, make it matter. It's a big deal. Summit is a game changer, guys. It is a game changer. It is huge. My income skyrocketed after Summit. And it's not because of Summit. It's because of the person that I became because I went to Summit. There's energy and stuff you get there that just isn't the same watching it from home. Okay. So that's a big deal. Go to super Saturdays, go to summit, um, get on your team calls, which you guys are. So go you guys. Um, but this is a type of personal development. Listen to the national wake up call, find PD that speaks to you. You know, what speaks to me might not be what speaks to you. I love Jen Sincero. Her, you are a badass completely changed my life. Um, I love Grant Cardone. I'm totally the like kick me in the ass PD is what I love. Like tell me like it is and tell me to get off my ass and do something. Maybe you need someone who like rubs your back and, 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 and consoles you like find something that speaks to you, find something that, that drives you and fires you up and gets you in the right frame of mind. Okay. It doesn't matter what it is. Just find it. Now someone's, one of my coaches told me that she listens to the Hamilton soundtrack and it like gets her fired up. So like whatever works for you, I don't care. Just find something that works for you. Number seven, be a great student. A great coach is a great student. Um, you don't need Jessica to tell you how to do things. You know, be proactive. Look on your coach online office and the FAQs. Look, search. I mean, Google is pretty great. Uh, YouTube is great. If you just type, if you go into YouTube and just type beach buddy, whatever you're looking for, you'll find it. Um, so be proactive in that and, and teach yourself, become a student. Um, because we're constantly changing what we do guys. I'm, I'm not the same coach I was when I started. That's for sure. Um, number eight keys in the follow up. If you're not following up, you're missing a ton of business guys. You have to follow up. Okay. Um, number nine, recruiting is a gift. Like I said, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my coach recruiting me if it wasn't for her sharing this opportunity and believing in me. Um, so when you share with people, don't be scared, don't be hesitant, because there are people out there who need your help, who need you to save them, okay? Um, and number 10 is consistency, keep going. Um, I know some, I know there are a lot of moms on my team who like to put their head in the sand. We kind of, we call it, you know, like when you, when you get scared of what you're doing and you just kind of like bury your head because you don't want, it's all or nothing, right? Like we're like, if I can't do it the way I want to do it, I'm not going to do it at all. Um, and that just kind of builds and snowballs, right? Just be consistent in your actions. Decide, again, what you need to do every day. Decide. Like, decide, I need to do my power hour. I need to do my workout. I need to drink my Shakeology. I need to show up for my business and do it. Even if the kids are sick, even if you're dead dog tired, like, make it happen and, and be excited about it because you're changing lives and you're changing your own life, okay? This is a big deal. This is an incredible opportunity. I have been exposed to a lot of MLMs in the past. I had even signed up with two of them in the, in the past, so maybe that was part of my hang up with Beachbody was that I thought it was gonna be like those where it was just, they take all my money and they don't, you know, I don't do anything. Um, but this is real, like this really impacts people's lives. Like you are holding something truly incredible. Um, and you know, moms are not whatever, like whatever your life, you know, whatever's going on in your life, it'll be there with or without Beachbody. Like the, the shit storms you face are going to be there regardless. Okay. But Beachbody can be the thing to make your life a little easier. It can be the thing to maybe get you out of some of those shit storms. Like, like I think about my financial situation and Beachbody has saved us a few times because of, because of this opportunity. Like we have a better financial situation. Um, so, you know, bills are always going to be there. Kids are going to be, you know, thrown fits anyways, guys. Um, do this for you. Okay. Do this because it's worth it to you. Okay. Um, yeah, but that's all I want to share. Um, I don't know if there's any questions or anything.
I know I talk really fast and kind of all over the place. You killed it. <laughs> Thanks. Killed it. I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's nice when they hear from a different, you know, a fresh face versus hearing me over and over again because I truly feel like this business is a basic business. We just tend to overcomplicate it to where we make up these obscene stories in our head that it's just, it's not possible when really it is like, it's so basic. Oh, let's see here. I think you do have some questions. Um, what was the was app like for the schedule oh. post? Oh, what was that? What was the app site for the scheduled post? Oh, post I'll type them. Postcron.com okay. and there was buffer with a two. I think there's other ones too, but I use Postcron. I know a lot of my coaches use Buffer. Doesn't really matter which one you pick, just pick one. <laughs> right. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that was privately sent to me. Yep. And then Katie. Yeah, that. Um, and you said one thing too that I always started saying: um, success is a decision in this business. You know, once you decide that you want to be successful, guys, you literally hit the ground running and you never look back. And um, I was the same as you, Danielle. I was the chronic quitter. And it was because like, I, I never really had a problem hitting success club. I know, knock on wood. It's just, I crave the connection with other moms being a stay at home mom. And, but I didn't have that, that why in place yet. That why that was just like, you know, why do I need to be doing this every single day? And I'm telling you, once you have that, guys, you never look back. And it is insane what you can create when you are consistent. <laughs> you have to be consistent. But um, do you guys have any other questions for her while she's on here? Let's see here. Don't I be shy. I know. Don't be shy. She's an open book, I can tell. I totally um, am. I took down a crap ton of nut notes. Um, I even, um, you know, I've been talking to a lot of my coaches about coming to Summit. So, guys, hopefully her telling you, it shows the importance of being at these events. So, it is, an, it is an investment in your business. Like, let's just look at it that way. Like, it's an investment in you and your business. If you're serious about this, this is like PD times like a billion. Like, this, it's a big deal. Plus, it's a tax write-off, too, so. Totally is. <laughs> Every last thing. Right? Uh, thank you for sharing. I love this. Uh, Danielle, I truly cannot thank you enough. You are such no a breath of fresh air, and you truly, uh, how do you work? How do you work on storytelling? Yeah, there you go. Um, that's a really good question, actually. Um, so I think a piece of that, I would share based on like what I was exposed to. So like um, in terms of like, I have lots of different pieces to my story as I'm sure everyone does, you know, like there's like, I guy like anxiety. I have like how I was raised and what I was exposed to, you know, like everybody has like different pieces, right? The quitting, like there's different facets of our story. Um, and you always want to look at like sharing at least one facet every few days is what I look at, you know? Um, and I would, actually tailor it to like, if you're struggling with what to share, tailor it to what you're experiencing in your messages. So like tailor it to, you know, how people are relating to you, tailor it to the excuses that you get from other people. Like I will tailor it to, you know, like I was someone who didn't trust this. Like I put it off and I put it off. So like, I will tell that story, right? Um, tell the story of how Shakeology has impacted your life. Tell the story of how these workouts and this community have impacted your life. Um, a really great exercise in storytelling is, or practicing that, is journaling. Like, I, I talk about brain dumps all the time on my team call. Um, whenever you feel like you're overwhelmed, just, like, take everything that's in your brain and just write it down. Like, it doesn't matter what it is, whatever's stressing you out, it could be the dishes, the laundry, your business, doesn't matter. Like, write it down. Because a lot of times what happens is we get kind of clogged up up here. And if you put it on paper, suddenly it actually boils down into two or three things instead of, you know, a hundred or whatever it is. Um, same thing with your story. Like, like journal a little bit about the pieces that make you who you are. Ask yourself some questions. Like what's, what's unique about me? What's, you know, normal about me? Like what, like being a mom, like that's pretty normal, right? Um, but what's unique about you? Like what, you know, made you who you are? What brought you to Beachbody? Who were you before? Who are you now? Like, do a little journaling about that because I bet there's a little pieces of your story that you can share. 
because really you want to think about who you're talking to. The people, the people that you're talking to are the people is the, is the person you were before Beachbody. Like that's the person you're talking to is that person that's going to relate to who you were and how you've changed and how that's what they want. Um, does that help at all? I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> no, that made perfect sense. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. I always get such a delay on my end. Thanks. You're welcome. Here's brand new. She literally just signed up two days ago. So. Oh, awesome. Welcome, girl. <laughs> so, yeah. Gonna crush it. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, I'm distracted by Angela's gun show. I don't even know. Is she working out right now? <laughs> but. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, Danielle, thank you seriously from the bottom of my heart. You are just, like I said, such a breath of fresh air. You're so real. And hopefully I know that you inspired me now to go do like another power hour, um, like right now as we speak. So. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Thanks for having me guys. I really appreciate it. And if you think of any questions after this, feel free to shoot me a message. I'm happy to answer it. I'm always that person that thinks of it after the fact. So it's cool. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> squirrel mom brain <laughs> yeah oh yeah totally totally destroyed but all right guys thank you so much and danielle i'll be talking to you soon and guys i'll go ahead and yeah. post recording on our team page all right much love bye guys thanks